Hey guys, I'm Dr. Jennifer West, and I wanted to cover ingestion of poisons or foreign material or things that your dog ate that might really freak you out. And when that is a true emergency, how to monitor and just better information about when to call your vet. So first off, if you're not sure, always safe just to call your veterinarian. The other thing is I'm gonna start and end with a really important phone number. So if you're ever unsure if something your pet ate, especially something that is a chemical, might be a danger, go ahead and call a pet poison helpline. So the ASPCA lists one. The number is 888-426-4435. 888-426-4435. The reason to call this number is they will be able to, to reach out to a veterinarian who is staffed by them to figure out was it a dangerous substance for your pet. They'll ask you important questions like what is the weight of your pet to the best of your ability and then be able to triage and help you determine do you need to go to get your vet right now or is there something you can do at home to save you money in a trip. Um, so it's a really big time saver, life saver, help you figure out is it an emergency. So things that your cat or dog might eat that can be really dangerous can be food items. So one that I've seen a lot of issues with in dogs is corn on the cob. The cob of this, the inside, is something that dogs don't typically chew up. And so they'll eat like a big chunk of it or just swallow a chunk and that's going to get stuck in their intestines. The number of surgeries we've done for these is tremendous. So be careful about food treats that you're giving your dog. Um, it might be tasty, they might love it, but it can be a surgery. Other things are some toys. Cats especially like to ingest string. They chase string around, this is a dog toy, but cats too, um, either one. If they're ingesting something long, that can cause a really scary type of foreign body called a linear foreign body or string long. Um, what can happen in cats is that tends to get caught around the base of their tongue. It can loop around there as they're chewing, as they're playing, and if they swallow it, their intestines and stomach are gonna keep on trying to push it along. It's called peristalsis, just moving food material usually or foreign material down. And as that goes and goes and goes, it starts to saw at the intestines and that is a surgical emergency. In dogs, the string tends to get caught in the stomach as it's leaving the intestines and causes the same really scary surgical emergency where if that string keeps rubbing on the intestinal lining, it can perforate and open up into the belly. Other things, that can be much safer for dogs, for example, include these awesome Kongs. Um, they're just supposedly indestructible, not true. Dogs can still destroy these. Um, little chunks and stuff can come off, but monitor your dog. If they're a super chewer, um, like mine is, these are a lifesaver, but nothing is indestructible. You know, they do their best. Every company tries to develop something. You need to monitor your dog. Um, same thing with cats. It's okay to play with the string, but don't leave that string unattended in an area where your cat's going to possibly ingest it. Um, things that are not toys or food items that can cause serious issues are chemicals. So I don't have any rat bait in my house, but a lot of people do if you live on a farm or a large property where you need to use mouse or rat bait. Dogs love it. It tends to taste really yummy to them. Um, and it can cause, there are a couple different kinds of rat bait, but they can either cause bleeding issues, serious GI upsets, um, ultimately seizures and death. Other things are cleaning products. This is a little Tide Pod. Um, anything that is a chemical um, or certainly medications. Your personal medications or a dog's or another pet's medications. I've even seen cats knock over pill bottles and eat pills. So you need to think about is there anything in the household, even if you didn't realize it was out, that could be dangerous for your pet? Um, the other really important thing is your veterinarian is not going to report you. If you mention that there is heroin in the household, there's marijuana in the household, anything that is illicit or illegal drugs, our role is to heal your pet. And the sooner you're able to help give us an idea of, you know what, it might have been an opioid, we can better treat and better combat the clinical signs we're seeing in your pet um, it will also be much cheaper. We won't have to run a billion tests to figure out why are they acting this way. We'll already have some of those tools available to start reversing clinical signs. With that in mind too, there are times when you have no idea what made your dog or cat sick. So what are you going to see at home? 
if your dog or cat ate something they shouldn't have. If it is causing an obstruction, an issue with food passage, or just ingesta, um, like stomach acid and things moving along, it may start with they are a little lethargic, not wanting to do as much. They may not want to eat or drink, or they might be drinking a whole lot and maybe regurgitating or vomiting that up. Really important here. Difference between regurgitation and vomit. Regurgitation is a involuntary, just food moves or liquid um, moves from the stomach up into the esophagus and it may come out of the mouth or not. It happens very quickly. Um, you are unlikely to hear any noise with this. There won't be stomach contractions. It'll just be they're eating or drinking then suddenly stuff falls out of their mouth or you see them hard swallow after it kind of looks like they had some stuff into their mouth. Vomit is when a, a cat or dog is heaving. Um, you'll hear the gross burp, burp, burp before something comes up. It's really important to know the difference between these two because vomiting is what's typically seen with a foreign body or something that may be a surgical consideration. So we wanna know if something is truly vomit or regurgitation. Regurgitation can be a lot of different issues with stomach acid. It can mean that the um, the the little, there's a um, sphincter, a little area that stops stuff from moving from the stomach up the esophagus. There can be issues with the large esophagus, mega esophagus, lots of different concerns. But vomiting is something that can really indicate there's a foreign body or something we need to evaluate further. Um, and as I said, just lethargy, acting off, they might be straining to defecate or develop diarrhea. And that can happen if the foreign body or material gets pretty far along and is only allowing a little bit of material to pass, so it's diarrhea, or they're trying to push and push and push and it's stuck. As material gets in their, in their systems, it can get dehydrated, it can get really badly stuck. Ways that this can be treated. One, a bland diet. Chicken or turkey with no additives, no seasonings, um, certainly not fried, just bland, boiled ideally, chicken and turkey and rice can be really helpful to settle their stomachs. It's kind of like when your doctor says, go get some bland toast and maybe, um, you know, something carbonated. For dogs, just plain water, chicken and rice, or turkey and rice. For cats, I would stick with their regular diet. Um, for both cats and dogs, do small meals more frequently. Sometimes for cats, switching to like tuna fish to try to stimulate them to have more interest. Um, just be careful with how much you're giving because it's high in salt, so it could be a little bit um, contributing to dehydration. You want to make sure they have plenty of water access. The other thing is what will your veterinarian recommend? So they may recommend x-rays. Radiographs, x-rays are a way to image the belly and see is there something obvious. Definitely metal shows up really really well. Bone should show up. Um, sometimes cloth material is much harder to get a definitive answer if, if there's something stuck in the stomach. Um, in the intestines, it's easier to tell when something's truly obstructed because they'll, we'll see that object stuck in an intestinal loop, like a long string or a long loop, and then something stuck, and there'll probably be gas distension of the loops um, higher up from it because things aren't passing through. What's even better and easier to diagnose is an ultrasound of the belly, but not every hospital has those available. You need someone trained in ultrasonography to do that. The other options sometimes are similar to the home option of bland food, are hospitalizing for supportive care. Hydration with IV fluids being hooked up to a line for a drip can help hydrate the intestines and stomach, also allow the nurses and doctors to evaluate the pet, watch for progression of clinical signs or concerns that they're developing a, a more emergent concern. So in summary, cats and dogs eat all sorts of stuff that they shouldn't. Um, it can be food, it can be a treat, part of a toy, um, it can be all sorts of things, cleaning products, toxins, medications, things you didn't think your pet would ever get into. Number one, no one's going to judge you for it. We've all been there. Animals eat stuff. Um, number two, the sooner you act, the better. Um, one thing I didn't mention yet is I would not recommend trying any type of treatments at home without consulting either a poison control facility or your veterinary office. Some items that your pet eats, if they are sharp, so if there was a toy that could have had some sharp edge or even glass, I've had dogs eat glass before, do not, 
um, make them vomit at home. Don't try to give them something like hydrogen peroxide because if your pet eats something, it might have been coated, it might have been surrounded in something that kept their esophagus safe, their food pipe safe. But when you make them vomit, that's a much more forceful contraction going the opposite direction of usual. And that object might cut the esophagus on the way back up. And that's a really serious emergency. It's very hard to repair the esophagus. Similarly, if it was something that could cause burning that could be caustic, you don't wanna make your pet vomit. So just reach out to pet poison, reach out to your veterinarian and figure out what is the best way to treat this. Not everything a pet might eat that wasn't food or wasn't intended for them is going to be a serious emergency. Um, some things can pass through their system, but reach out to your vet, find out what the best recommendation is. And lastly, one more time with that pet poison phone number, 888-426-4435. Thanks guys.